Brad Buckner and uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about Handy Sharp and just tell you just a little bit about where Handy Sharp came from, how long it's been around. A lot of people look at this and they'll say, well, look at the things they come up with today. Well, it didn't, it wasn't come up with today. The deal with this is it was actually 26 years old. Uh, a guy named Dennis uh, made these. Uh, he's got 38 patents. He's uh, got a brain on his, uh, I guess, uh, uh, he's got a head on his shoulders, you know, and um, he came up with them 26 years ago, patented them, and built them. This is not the model that he actually built. They had two sides, but this is the type of sharpener that we have now. And so let me show you a little bit today about how to use this sharpener on a wide variety of things. And we're going to show you today a regular blade, uh, serrated edge blade, fishing knives, hunting knives, kitchen knives, things like that. We can also show you how to sharpen uh, axes, hatchets, hose, shovels, planter blades, draw knives, you know, all your pruners, hedge trimmers, grass trimmers, side dikes, tin snips, things like that. If your knives are dull, it's probably because A, you really don't understand how to sharpen a knife, B, you don't have something to sharpen it with, or C, you just keep telling yourself you don't have the time to do it. Sharpening a knife from really dull to sharp is a process that you have to take. It takes a little bit of time. And so why not just keep the knife sharp? And when I talk about sharp, I'm actually talking about something like this, right out to the tip of the blade. That's sharp. You know, and if you can sharpen a knife like that and get it this sharp, that's quite an accomplishment. You can sharpen your scissors, you can sharpen your pruners, you can sharpen serrated edge blades, like this one right here. You're going to see that there's a round hole there, 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 there. And you wonder, okay, how do we sharpen the round holes and the points? Well, generally speaking, you can't with your sharpening device. If you take this sharpening device, you have a straight edge here. If it's flat and you grind it 90 degrees, you have an absolute 90 degree corner here and an absolute 90 degree corner there. It also has a V-notch on it, and I'm going to describe here in a little bit how to use the V-notch, but not right now. V-notches are for kitchen knives that don't have nicks in them. We'll go that far right now. There's an edge right there on that sharpener that I sharpen with. There's also an edge on the sharpener right here that I sharpen with. As long as you're sliding the edge on the corner of the blade, if that tungsten carbide is about 20 times harder than the blade, sharp corner, 20 times harder than the blade, blade's gotta go. It will look just like this. It's going to look just like this on the knife. There's an edge or corner, whatever you wanna call it right there. Flip it over, there's another edge right there. I always start at the tip of the blade and come back towards the handle because from my thumb out is generally the least sharp of the blade. That's where it's the dullest right there. Right now I'd like to take a look at the tip of the blade and I'm going to show you how to sharpen it from the tip towards the handle. To do that I've got to come down here towards the edge of the table. Uh, maybe it's just going to be the uh, countertop or whatever. I'm going to put the knife on at a little bit of an angle with the tip sitting up in the air like this. I'm going to put the sharpener flat to the table like this, but I'm going to tip it up on the corner like this. Remember that I only use the corners of the sharpeners. The heel of my hand goes on the table, the knife looks like this, and then I touch like this. So let's take a good close look at what I'm doing here. Okay, now that you see the position of the knife, I'm going to take it like this and I'm going to slow down so you can actually see. I set it down at the tip, slide it towards the handle, pick it up, set it down at the tip, slide it towards the handle, pick it up, and set it down. In uh, regular speed it's going to look like this. Don't just slide it back and forth, pick it up, set it down, slide, pick it up, and set it down, and slide. I just rotate the knife over like this, leave my hand here, now I just brush the tip. Don't dig at it, see how the knife blade kind of bent, don't do that. Just touch it light, slide, about 80 revolutions a minute, Turn it over and do the same thing. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to go from the tip to the rest of the blade, and it's going to look like this. 
that's parallel to the blade. That's 90 to the blade. 45 degrees is important because if I'm 90 degrees to the blade and I slide this really sharp little edge down the blade like this, if there's a little nick in it, it'll find the nick, fall in the hole, come out and make it worse. At 45 degrees, it makes the cutting edge so wide that it can't fall in the nick. My fingers are always touching the blade. That way, when I stop moving, see if I pull it down, naturally my wrist and hand will spring back up like this. If I pull it over here and just relax, it'll fall right back in that position like this. Parallel to the blade, 90, sharpen regular blades at 45 degrees, tip them till they touch, fingers about between the A and the N on the word hand. You see I drew a black line across there, it's kind of cheating, but that shows people, you know, basically where my fingers are going to be. If I take this right now and I lay it on there until it balances, that's really close to where I want it. Practice doing that, and then just touch it with your middle finger like this. Go back to the knife like this. See my fingers on the blade. If my finger's on the blade, it'll stop at the right position this way. It'll stop at the right position that way. Take this, take the sharpener, slide it down the blade. Just like that. I can come back to 45 degrees this way. Slide it down the blade, clear out off the tip. And the reason I'll go 45 degrees this way and 45 degrees this way, alternating back and forth, if I only go one direction, I will set up a cut pattern, I call it railroad tracks, on the blade, and I'll start a bumpy action going on there. So if I do this three or four times, do this three or four times, I can actually take the bumpiness off of a blade that somebody might have put on there by using the V-notch and not properly understanding how to use the V-notch, and it'll kind of tear up the blade. So I fix blades with the open face by 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees this way, and just slide it down the blade, never press hard, an eighth of a pound of pressure. I guess I'm going to say, try to imagine twice the weight of the tool. In other words, don't come up here and dig at it. Fingers over the A and the N, slide. Just like that. Rotate the knife over and do the same thing. 45 degrees this way, 45 degrees that way. On the corner of the sharpener, light pressure slide. I'm going to speed up here a little bit and I'm going to show you exactly what it should look like after you get the hang of how to sharpen with this sharpener. And what I would actually do is I would take it and I just do this. When I'm at a show and I'm demoing and I'm sharpening knives as if you would at home after you've gotten the hang of it, it's going to look just like this. If you'll do 30 second touch-ups on your knives, Sit down and sharpen everything in the house. Sharpen all your knives, your scissors, everything. Then keep them sharp by doing 30 second tune-ups every now and then. And believe me, if you can keep a knife sharp by doing a 30 second tune-up, you'll be a lot happier than sitting down and taking two hours with a stone trying to get something sharp that you've let go for two years. You're not gonna like it. Okay, I sharpen at 45 degrees. I hone the wire edge off at 90 degrees. This would be 90 degrees to the blade. And you might say, what? The wire edge, what's that? If you take and grind a blade this way and this way, and it's sharp, part of the reason it's so sharp, there's a little tiny whisker edge, a little tiny wire edge that sticks up off of that knife. When you go to cut something with that knife and you bend that little wire edge over a little bit, the knife is going to appear to be dull when you know you just sharpened it. Today I hear say, people say, Oh man, knives are no good for anything anymore. They're just made cheap. The first time I use it, it's dull. It's an $80 knife. In, in fact, it is dull, but it's not because the steel got dull. It's because the little wire edge got bent over a little bit. So I'm going to teach you how to find the wire edge on a blade.